Hello, and welcome to another episode of A Closer Look. Thank you for joining us. In this segment of A Closer Look, we zoom into some of the allegations made by the alternate government and challenges laid down by shadow ministers for the current Pangu-led government. With feedback being thrown to the media from both sides of the House, one can draw a conclusion that this is now becoming a battle of facts between the government and the opposition carcasses. Since the 9th of March, we have witnessed a rat over who is telling the truth and who is not from the current Marape Rosso government to the opposition side of the house, a battle of facts. During the week, the alternate prime minister and provincial member for ECP, Alan Bird, have revealed threats he had received and confirmed that he has been advised by a deputy police commissioner that his life is under threat. He further revealed that he was advised by senior government ministers that his phone has been illegally tapped and was told by reliable sources that various state institutions have been instructed to try find anything illegal on him. Even all the apparatus of state have been put on full alert to hunt him down. Responding to these serious allegations, Prime Minister James Marape in a statement demanded evidence. Marape stated that if he is telling the truth, who is the Deputy Police Commissioner concerned and which police are monitoring the situation? Marape called on Mr. Bird to provide the names of ministers informing him about his phone being illegally tapped and further called for the MP to point out which state institutions have been instructed to find anything illegal on him and charge him. This call by the Prime Minister was reiterated by the ICT Minister Timothy Masio in an interview with this newsroom. We are not responsible for it. We are not even monitoring anybody on the Facebook and all this. Facebook is, is straightforward. Everybody, they, they see the Facebook and they know all this. But, you know, um, what, uh, you know, the Honorable Alan Brady says is really something that uh, me have long believe in. And he has to come up with the evidence and give us all the evidence, not just screenshots to you and all this, because there are some things that we need to, uh, we can uh, verify from uh, the minister's point of view and from our work uh, that we do. We are not, not, we are not, we don't interfere, we don't uh, monitor anybody. Uh, this is a free country and people have the freedom to, uh, you know, uh, say whatever they want. And I'm just surprised to see that, you know, he's saying that the state apparatus and all this, uh, you know, all this is, you know, I, I can't believe this, you know, it's happening. It's, our government is not like that. However, responding to the call made by the two leaders from the government to provide evidence to the allegations made, this was what the alternate prime minister has to say. I think the important thing is what we've said in the statement. These things are not new. We know that threats are a daily thing in Papua New Guinea, not just for members of parliament. And, and this is the thing that worries me. If we start to weaponize institutions of state, we've already seen it with DSIP and PSIP funding. We've known for many years now these things are weaponized. They're weaponized against members of parliament. So I mean a nubla something, all right? And we also know that uh, previous Challenges for the Prime Minister have also received uh, threats. So I mean on Nubla something. So when I raise them, I expect that people will be concerned and say, look, I mean, the thing the Prime Minister should have said is, you blow said make him this law something, yeah, you blast stop him. And that's what I'm asking for. Just just stop what you're trying to do. Huh? You may all get a Papua New Guinea and say, I'm not going to let the man stop your thing. I'm not going to try it. I'm going to Friends, na family, na want toka. So use him head, live and make him something. I mean, that's essentially why I came out in public is to say to everyone, let's stop for a moment and do these things properly. That's all I'm asking for. Now we've already seen in government departments how certain government officials they become very vindictive. Also, bagarapi molman lor walk lawyer. So sometimes when we find out about these things, we've got to keep quiet. And that's what I've done. 
But what I did do was to call the Deputy Prime Minister and tell him on the same day that the police called me, I called the Deputy Prime Minister and I informed him of what happened. And I left it at that. So I think the reason why I came out was when I saw letters. I saw copies of letters. And there's another letter that we are waiting to get some clearance on as well, where not just myself, but members of the opposition are being targeted for investigation. Mr. Burdev stated that he is not the enemy of the state and outlined that the state of PNG has six enemies that they should put their focus on, highlighting that PNG is a failed state through the indicators that includes Security Gap, a state that is unable to guarantee the safety and security of its citizen, Capacity Gap, a state that is struggling to provide services to its people, Legitimacy Gap, a state where the election of its leaders is called into question. Poor governance, corruption and nepotism. Prolonged economic crisis and extremely inequality. Bird further stressed that he hopes leaders find the wisdom, the courage and the will to meet six main enemies head on because this is what the country needs. Shedding light into the state of the economy, the opposition leader and member for Chuave, James Nomane, has called on the prime minister to appoint a treasurer immediately. And we haven't been doing enough to address the youth bulge issue. So when we ap apply deductive reasoning, and this is very, very important for the country to understand. In the last three months, nothing's been done. In the last five years, nothing's been done. All our hopes and dreams have been in these big extractive resource projects, Pogra, Pingyang, Papua LNG. None of these things will come to fruition in the next 12 months. What happened up in Pogora last time was just a publicity stunt. Where's the power for Pogora? What's the status of Hyde's gas? It's, it's, it doesn't operate. So how are we powering Pogora? So we've got to stop lying to the people of Papua New Guinea that things are right and we're tracking all right. And that the economy is in good hands. It's not in good hands. So my call to the prime minister right now is to stop the circus, stop the facade, and appoint a competent Minister for Treasury to start handling the economic affairs of Papua New Guinea. Because if he doesn't do that, inflation is going to get out of control. We're already in a cost of living crisis. Unemployment is going to get out of control, and we won't be able to do anything about the youth bulge issue. I put, put my media statement out, and I put some numbers in there. The challenge to the Prime Minister is, and his government, come out to the, to the country and tell us how you will reduce the price of 500 grams of rice to two kina, how you will reduce the price of oxen palm so it's affordable at five kina, how you will create 100,000 jobs immediately. And all these things are possible. Mr. Nomane labeled the January 10th event as a reflection of an incompetency within the government and elaborated on issues of threats to the country's economy, pinning a spotlight to the booming unemployment rate. They plan to do to get us back on track. And this has to happen with a sense of urgency. So from the alternative government, we see that the government is just taking us to a point where the youth bulge will implode. There'll be no prospects and opportunities for our young men and women all throughout the country. And this will create total chaos. The issues are real. Every day, don't think people are having three square meals a day. They're not. People are, people are going hungry. People are having babies, unemployed. And this is going to create a disaster for the country. So it's serious and it's real. And the time to act is now. He further highlighted on some positive outcome government would have achieved if they have a clear vision and policy. All that's required is a, an acute understanding of how the economy works, strong management ability, leadership with vision. Leadership that's for the people and not for personal interest. 
then you will see that with all the resources at our disposal, the land, the youth, the productive capacity of the youth, the, the seas, the forests, there's nothing stopping us to achieve scale, to achieve exponential growth, to increase exports. But what's required here is a clear pathway to achieving that outcome. And with this lackadaisical approach that the Prime Minister seems to have with everything, no policy, no strategy, no plan, no clear vision, Papua New Guinea will get nowhere and we're going to get there in a hurry. So what's required now? If he's serious about the economy and the future of Papua New Guineans, you've got to appoint a competent Minister of Treasury immediately and have that minister come out and tell the country what is the economic plan for recovery. We now take a quick break and when we return we will reflect on stories of farmers embarking on the road to self-reliance to agriculture. Welcome back to A Closer Look. The European Union has increased its footprints in the East and West Sipic provinces through its support to rural entrepreneurship investment and trade program in the country. Under the program, the local cocoa farmers in both provinces have gained skills and knowledge in the value chains of cocoa, vanilla and fishery. We will now take a closer look at the success stories of some of the local farmers in the two provinces. The people of East and West Sipic, well known for their cocoa and vanilla, are now well skilled and knowledgeable in the farming of these two cash crops through trainings and equipment supplied by EU Strait Program. Nambuku community in Ward 10 Numbo LLG, Yanguru Sausia district in East Sipic province are excelling in the cocoa, vanilla and fishery value chain with the support of Strait Program. Fabian Ambuku, a local farmer from the Waringin village of Yanguru, South CIA, who has been very instrumental in involving his local community in the straight program set under the Yabu Farmers and Agriculture Association, there are 4,600 farmers currently registered. He added that the estimated population of his local community is 2,000 and they are all involved in the program. He said when the EU trade program ends, people who own land will branch out to help the others in farming of the tree products. Mr. Ombuku further elaborated on the trainings provided by the program. Fish time will come, give him training. Lomipla, I'll give him more materials. Lomipla, no other materials will lose him. I'll give him a materials for working feet. Look, okay, 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 blow fish. Okay, also, I'm a lot of logging fish. How long separating fish? Love fish spawn. Now, I'm going to pick a salary market. Okay, the vanilla. I'll come, give him training. Lomipla, last week, I'm pian January first week. I'll come, I'll give him a training. Blow fish. Pian the solo salim materials. Call you me. Okay, some people no kissing blang emia, and some people metros will pakam. All but give me bla vanilla tryer. Me bla by putting vanilla and me bla trying. And then all but give me bla fake mouse. It's la fake mouse yeah, I'm mouse yeah got. But me bla picking vanilla and vanilla can stop twenty to thirty years. Farmer, you can you can come up with most of them. How much bla kilo blow you? I can stop. 
Now then you can export him no market. Okay, and this program will give me a fish, will give me a training business, will give me a cool storage house. And online lo coordinator, I'm approving business this la project lo mibla ya. So this la usia mo se mibla si fish ta solo fish pon. Kaino se mibla karago lo distance. Se mada mibla ba putim insha Allah la cool storage house ya. Want them cool all putim lem now. Then mibla ba packet sim na mibla salim out lo market. Then time production em start lo crop mibla. Mibla gan album lo surukim na salim gol mama gan packim le ski kena. Salim go time mibla golo market now se weda or road no ride or mibla market now line no kamo. Kaino se mibla kambe gan putim start. Next again mibla gan salim out. Okay lo koko. All key me bla polybex, all key me bla spade, all key me bla padding tap, all key me bla padding knife. So me bla karem kam, me bla distribute him. Mogota line is la community, I'm all kissing, but still all by kissing at polybex. Because long road system now, hard la me bla transport, me bla walk him necessarily here, who shall stop close to him kam karem kagao, who shall stop long him kam si polybeko. So I'm go necessary lab no, me bla bagona walk him padding lab. Time blocky padding lab no, kagao karem. So I prepare long. When I plan next, I have this value chain program here, I will export him cacao here. I will wait him all now. Mr. Ombuku said 5,000 poly bags will be supplied to widows in the district. He stressed on the projects delivered under the different divisions of the program. So time straight, I come, I will look at him. I come to the site of Mama. All Mama and Susa, all the children. Okay, all come to the site of ITU, all come to install him lights, all schools. Okay, all come to the site of SME. All help me plan lo training, lo how ba me plan make him online marketing. Me plan ken salim product lo me plan through lo Facebook, WhatsApp, or kaino se me plan ken make him product lo me plan na. All paya ken stop lo longer ken contact me plan ken cost re lau stop lo na. Me plan ken salim product lo me plan even hatok lo me plan kira na pa ni market. Mothers and youths of the Nambuku local community said the program has greatly enhanced their livelihood. The people of Amaup village in the Maprik district are another local community that is striving in the value chain of vanilla with the technologies provided by the straight program. The ward councillor Saliman Bihani said the people of Amaup village rely on cocoa and coffee in the past and in the year 2000 started planting vanilla and then cocoa farming was reintroduced to the EU straight program in 2021. He said the program has encouraged them to grow both vanilla and cocoa through which they are currently earning their living by. Stephen Kambaina, the assistant chairman of Bawa Agro Communities, the association Amaum villages are registered under, said their vision through the association is poverty elevation. Sample simple, me bla salim ko kam finish long. Thailand, seven kilos at me bla salim finish. Okay, next one, I'm by me bla puti me ko lo nari from nari, and then eight eight packs by ko long. Must be hopefully by next month or something like that. One time, nanda. Bibla basale miko as as simple. Tobias Niruwia, the National Vanilla Production Assistant Officer of Straight Program, highlighted that the program has brought improved technologies and training skills to the farmers. Bibla supply all materials. Some dogs know some bibla look some stuff there. All basket, lo put the pin blanket, eski stuff, and all some bibla look all farmers bibla. Um, plus all tools for working the field. Sharing the same sentiment with Stephen Kambaina in elevating poverty is Father Zachary Miroy of Vanimo Catholic Diocese, who has been influential in providing assistance to the local cocoa farmers of Laitre and Osima village in the West Sipik province. Father Zachary initiated a cocoa nursery in 2022 called the St. Mary's Gate of Heavens with the intention to reach all farmers in the province. 
He stressed that the nursery is a new growth area that is accessible to farmers in the remotest parts of the province. He said with the cost of living increasing every year, he is working under the Vanimo Catholic Diocese vision of self-reliance. The St. Mary's Gate of Heaven nursery supplies cocoa clones and trainings to farmers in other districts in the province. Ishmael Ga, the cocoa production officer in Vanimo, said the inception of the program was in 2020. However, due to COVID-19, programs fully rolled out in 2021 in East Sipik province. He revealed that under the cocoa group value chain, the program has covered 330 cocoa groups in both East and West Sipik province. Mr. Ga revealed that the program provided training on the rehabilitation of existing cocoa trees. Farmer groups have uh, existing cocoa trees and we uh, run trainings on uh, cocoa blo general cocoa block best practice management and the control or the control of uh, CPB, uh, one of the best disease that is uh, affecting our our farmers cocoa trees and declining or reducing the cocoa yield so that is also the training that we have also run with the cocoa groups and now currently they are applying in their blocks building on that he said they have been working with the png cocoa board in establishing more than 205 bad wood gardens Mr. Ga further added that they are now concentrating in working with the PNG Cocoa Board in the installments of eight pilot solar combination dryers, a new drying facility technology recommended by the PNG Cocoa Board research. We take a quick breather now, and when we return, we will take a closer look at the growing industry in Papua New Guinea, oil palm. You're watching a closer look. The oil palm is known as the most successful cash crop in Papua New Guinea. This crop stands as the country's most leading agricultural export, generating over 2.8 billion kina, marking a pivotal contribution to the country's economy. In this segment of A Closer Look, we highlight the government's intervention and support through the allocation of over 3.5 million kina to the National Oil Palm Intervention Program to address some of the challenges in the industry. The National Oil Palm Intervention Program was piloted last year by New Britain Palm Oil, where 48,000 seedlings were distributed, and Aggie Oil Palm distributed 24,000 seedlings, totaling to 864,000. As part of the government's reaffirmed dedication to fueling the growth of the oil palm industry in the country, under the NOPIP program, the government has allocated a total of 3.5 million this year towards bolstering the production capabilities of the industry by addressing some of the long-standing issues affecting the industry, and one such is the aging oil palm trees. The 3.5 million funding will be directed towards the cost of seedlings that will be distributed to smallholder growers to replant and replace aging oil palm trees. 
The aim of this replanting exercise is to rejuvenate the field of smallholder growers with new eye-yielding palm trees. Under the stewardship of Oil Palm Minister Francis Maneke, the National Oil Palm Intervention Program is progressing well. We like to call them Papua New Guinea industry, low oil palm, and we are contributing kind of 40 percent low revenue blue milo country. The slime close to also 2 billion kina uh, inside lo national best blue yumi. Minister Maneke has been hands-on traversing areas where the projects are based to ensure effective distribution of funds. This year, more funds have been allocated with a notable 540,000 kina to New Britain Palm Oil for the distribution of 35,000 seedlings, which will cover 250 hectares of land in Oskins in West New Britain and Oro provinces, followed by Hagi with 14,000 seedlings to revive 100 hectares in Biala. These commitments were made during the minister's recent visit to this project areas early this year. During the minister's recent visit to the NBPOL for Milne Bay Estates, a further commitment of 216,000 kina to distribute 14,000 seedlings was made to cover 100 hectares of land. Maneke said small older farmers will benefit directly from this funding. We are now paying some money today to um, uh, Milne Bay Estate so that they can continue to see to your overgrown palm trees, for especially for you smallholder growers in Alatau. Maneke highlighted that no previous government has given support to smallholder growers like the current government. He said for the first time in Papua New Guinea, smallholder oil palm growers are receiving direct support from the government. The minister will also launch this intervention program next week in New Ireland province with a presentation of 324,000 kina for 21,000 seedlings to cover 150 hectares of land. Manake reveals despite being a challenging industry for the last 60 years, oil palm remains a top commodity and continues to generate four times revenue compared to other export commodities. That's all we have for you on this episode of A Closer Look. Join us same time next week for another episode. On behalf of the entire team, thank you for watching and have a pleasant evening.